my name is Sarah Möhlemann, I'm an author, and I'm delighted to host this evening about female desire and the female gaze. With me on stage is author and journalist Lisa Tadeo, whose novel Three Women has met great critical acclaim and has taken the international bestseller lists by storm. Uh, it is said to be the most in-depth look at the female sex drive that's been published in decades but also to confirm grim truths about female desire and power. Welcome, Lisa. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us Thank tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, Maria Preuss just uh, called your book a masterclass of empathy. Mm. Can you <laughs> identify with that? Um, I mean, I, I, um, I practice empathy when speaking to people who are divulging their deepest secrets. Mm -hmm. um, I think that to do anything else would be just unkind. So, I mean, I don't know about master class <laughs> or anything, but um, I do have empathy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's very clear from the book that you do. Uh, but you had three women, indeed, uh, talk to you about the most intimate details of their desires and their sex life. I was wondering, how did you find the three women uh, that you portrayed in this book? So I, um, I began by driving across the country, the United States, about six times. Um, the first thing I did, which um, we were talking about earlier, was I went to a place called the Porn Castle in San Francisco. The Porn Castle. Yes, okay. yes. I felt like it was, I was trying to find the nucleus of sex. Yes, and was <laughs> it? Was it? No, I mean, it might have been like an offshoot, but it definitely <laughs> wasn't the nucleus. Um, I was, I was following two women. Um, one of them was having sex on camera at this um, place where pornographic films were being made and she was having sex with men and machines that was in the porn castle yes okay yes. um and her girlfriend was directing her which i thought was so interesting because not only are you directing your lover having sex with other people but you're directing your female lover having sex with men so i thought that was very um i thought it was interesting and i spent several weeks trying to figure out what the director was feeling and what her actor girlfriend was feeling and they just kept saying that it was a job which I believed it was a job for them but at the same time after spending so much time um with that sort of you know there was a lot of sex going on <laughs> in the porn castle yeah. as one might imagine um I, I grew bored of the acts of sex and people who were not sort of um, talking about things that went beyond them. Like was, it was, it, was it the emotional detachment for that, that put you off? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that it put me off so much as I didn't, I would write about it for three or four pages, but mm -hmm. I could not see myself being engaged for a chapter even. Okay, so the porn castle wasn't going to be it for no, the novel? it was not. Then you started hanging flyers in yes. uh, CD bars and supermarkets. Exactly, yes. Um, well, I also hung them on art installations. Okay, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> um, I was trying to find, yes, I, I, driving across the country, I posted flyers on cars to go, not people's private cars, sometimes though, maybe. <laughs> um, tree trunks, without hurting the tree, I would use scotch tape. Um, and but what did they say? <laughs> oh, I need women to open up about their sex life. Uh, you know, that would have been very straightforward. Yep. And I wish, it's funny because I hear that and I'm like, oh, that's what I should have said. <laughs> but no, I what, didn't. What did it say? Um, one said, they were all different. I had like 10 different, I also had business cards that I would like leave on like the cash registers of coffee shops. So I was very... I had a wide range of methods, but none of them involved the very straightforward looking for blank. Um, it was like unrequited love question mark. Do you have a tale of wild desire? And you know, then I had like, and then and then a lot of men responded probably, <laughs> or not? No, no, it was it was about ninety percent men. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and they were like, yes, I you know, it was I didn't find any of the people, any of the, actually one one woman I did find from the flyer. Um, but it was an anomaly, mm. so yes, no. 
And then you came across the three women in the book, mm -hmm. as uh, Maria Preuss described them really beautifully, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Lina, Maggie, and Sloane. Yes. And um, so, but you first, you spoke to a lot of more women, and then you kind of mm -hmm. brought it back to these three. Why these three? I mean, they plainly just gave me the most of any, I mean, I spoke to hundreds of people, and many of those, not many of the hundreds, but at least 20 or so for more than a month or two months. And these three, I wouldn't even call them women in the sense that they were three human beings that just told me so much. And it's hard, you know, it's like um, now that the book's been published, I have friends coming up to me who are like, you could have talked to me. When <laughs> during the writing, wow. of, during the research of the book, they would say, oh my God, are you writing about me right now? So mm -hmm. there's been quite, you know, a sea change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's hard, is mm -hmm. my point, to get people to talk about not just sex, but desire. And I think, you know, the difference is, I think that with with sex, you can call your friend up the next day and sort of say, you know, oh my gosh, and then we did X, Y, and Z. But it's a different story. That's a mechanical sort of thing for the most part to say like, you know, so-and-so, we did this and then he or she left and I feel empty, I feel X, Y, Z. I like this person I shouldn't like. You know, I like a married man. I like a woman. I like whatever it is, it's, um, it's something that you can't, can't describe because it's scary mm -hmm. to say it out loud. It's scary to say it to a friend or a family member. What makes it scary? Because I think once you put a secret out into the atmosphere, it you kind of it gets away from you and it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that talking to, if you tell a friend, like if you tell someone that you know um, about a person that you're sleeping with, now that that's out of the bag and that person is going to hold that with them and going to have some sort of power over you. Even though I was writing a book, you would think that that would be, you know, more sort of scary. But in a sense, it wasn't one because the book was so far off from anything happening. I don't think like, you know, that, that people, you know, one of Maggie, who's the young woman in North Dakota who allegedly has the affair with her teacher, about a month before the the proofs were ready, her mother said to me, you know, you've been talking to us for like three years now. Like, you can say that there's no book. Like, I was some crazy person. <laughs> like, you know, so I think people just forget yeah. that, um, that this person isn't going to sort of tell their story, but at the same time, their story is being told. Um, they're telling their story, and it's not getting, it's not sort of going out to another friend Yes, you know what I'm saying. That's a difference. So it's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's important to point out that you followed these three women for eight years, mm -hmm. and that you followed them really closely. You read their text messages. Um, you were there after they had betrayed their husband. Uh, with Lena, for instance, you uh, drove, not behind her, but to the river where she meets her uh, secret lover, mm -hmm. and then afterwards she came to you. And she could immediately tell you what she felt, what they did? Yes, thrust by thrust. Yes. Um, <laughs> so it was for Lena. Um, Lena is the housewife in Indiana who her husband had just told her that he no longer wanted to kiss her on the mouth. And then they went to a couple's therapist who said, you know, Lena, the way that you feel about wet wool is the way that Ed feels about kissing you on the mouth. Yeah. Um, so... You know, that's a, it was a shocking, and then she was about to, as you said, start up a relationship with um, her high school lover with whom she had always been stratospherically obsessed. So to both be at sort of the depths of, of pain with a decade-long marriage of being sort of bodily abandoned, you are now also about to embark upon this love affair. So you both want to talk about your pain and shout about your crush from the rooftops. So she wanted someone to sort of just be the kind of, be a sort of virtual diary for what she wanted to say. Yeah. And who were you for her then? Were you like a ghost or were you a friend or what would you say? I think I was, I was more ghost than friend. Yeah. I was somewhat of a 
cipher. Yeah. Um, a person that um, I think she, like, because even though we talked and it was always me asking the questions. And so when someone, it's kind of like, you know, if you have a friend who's in the middle of some, um, you know, debacle, some, some terrible thing that's happening, you're always kind of listening. So it's that times two years. Okay. Um, so, yeah. and you, you kind of, as the person listening, you get used to listening. Yes. And as the person talking, the, the speaker gets used to talking. Yeah, you have this pattern, these rules yes. are yeah, totally. set. Yeah. Um, now, uh, for a book about sex, there's actually surprisingly little sex in it, I thought. Mm -hmm. Is it then more about desire? Yeah, I mean, you know, Lena's um, Lena's sex scenes are the most explicit yes, because she yeah. was. Whereas, you know, I think one would think that Sloan, who has threesomes, um, whose husband watches her have sex with other men, it, I think the temptation is there to to write more about her sex when, in fact, it was Lena to whom sex was more important. I think it was Lena who was finding herself in the actual act like not just being titillated or having orgasmic experiences, but actually, you know, she was raped as a young woman and then she was not touched by her husband for many years. So she was becoming in touch with her body in a way that I think was less about Aiden, the man, than it was about, he was like a conduit by which she found herself. Yeah. But what struck me is that all of the three women um, are in a position where they adore the man where the men have a certain power over them, and even um, who they are, uh, they see that in relation to the men. So why did you pick three women, these three women, uh, with this kind of relationships towards their lovers, their men? I think that, you know, I didn't, I really didn't pick them mm -hmm. um, so much as they picked their stories to be told and I think that it I think that when you're in that sort of a when you're in a situation where you feel powerless you want to talk about it more than if you're um more than if everything's going well in yeah. your life you know you're yeah. like oh we painted the house seafoam green and <laughs> you know we got a new car it's like nobody really cares one and two if you're in that sort of a plateau place you don't really need to talk about it Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think that these women were both at the sort of depths of pain and, and or the heights of passion. And I think that's when people want to talk. I also think that, you know, I think that they, that they were not, I don't think that they so much ceded control to their lovers as ceded control to kind of wanting to lose themselves in something that was not rote. Yes, but they really lose them. Alina, she's, she's like completely dependent of what her lover wants. If her lover wants to meet her, then there she is. Well, you know, I think that, I think it's less about her lover wanting to meet her than her wanting to meet him. He was not saying, come to me or you will die. She was thinking, if I don't go to him, yeah. I will die. Yeah. So um, in a sense, I think that you know, I think she had the most agency in the book. You do? I do. I do. Because um, because it's been so often that I said, Lena, come on, get it together, girl. <laughs> Just don't let that man lay everything out for you. It, but if you look at it in the sense that she had not had this kind of sex ever yeah. and felt what she was feeling, yeah. then and to have two children that she had to care for with a husband that she... Didn't, didn't want to be with her, she would sort of, she would find a babysitter at the drop of a hat, drive one car to the other car to not put on too many miles over each of them and to sort of like, you know, order pizza for the kid, just throw everything. It's like a storm of doing yeah. everything at once. That takes a lot <laughs> of planning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it to be with him. To be with him. Yeah. And it's not him going, come. It's her going, yeah. I must go. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, at what point is, is he the wrong man or person? Yeah, probably. But who are we to decide who is the right person? Sometimes it looks from the outside like somebody's with the right person. And then you find out, you know, years later that it was absolutely awful the whole time. Mm. 
What what does your book, if if I if I've read the book and I close it, what do I take from your book? What would you like me to take from your book? That we judge so much that I think it's almost second nature to judge, and um, that 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 uh, a man said this to me, and it was very. First of all, it was a man who'd read my book, so I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he said that before reading my, this book, he had not realized how indifference could be so wounding. Mm. And, you know, when it comes to Lena, who's just waiting for Aiden to just text her one word back, and he doesn't, um, all she wants is to be seen, to be replied to, even if it's one word. She just wants to hear you know, even no. if it's no, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, and what you've you've spoken with so many people about the subject of female desire. What what did you take away from that? What 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 struck you? Um, you know, many things struck me. Well, the, one of the things that struck me was that it, everybody's having a lot more sex than <laughs> than you think. Oh, and really? I thought, oh yeah, it was shocking. I was like, this person's doing that. There was a lot of that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you know, once you start talking to people, you hear a lot of things, and it's just like you people you don't think might be doing something very exciting. So that was a shocking <laughs> thing for me. Um, and you know, I also I I saw a lot how much all the mini assaults and the large assaults that we endure um, as women, as human beings, add up to the way that we present sexually in our, in our future and the way that our mothers present, um, sort of weigh upon us, which is why I talked about my own. Yes, there's um, a very personal prologue and epilogue about you and your mother yeah. there. Yes, and, and what was the reason why you put that? In. Because I saw one of the things that I noticed the most was that um, was that you know we talk so much about um, daddy issues at least in the you know American lexicon that's a big you know men will say oh she's got daddy issues which means I don't know some variety of things that's good yeah. for the man I've never really understood that <laughs> but um, I've heard it so much that but with me I had mommy issues or I have mommy issues and so many of the women that I spoke to have mommy issues and whether that means that they know you know too little too much or the right amount about their mother's past and desires it was still such a it was so interesting to me how much it it affected them their yeah. desire what they didn't know about their mother's desire what I didn't know about my mother's desire makes me think all the time and she passed away I can't ask her, you know, and that's something that, um, yeah, it's just, it's something I saw very, very much. Yeah. In the, in the book, you give these women a voice, but it's, it's actually quite a literary, a literary book. Yes. So I was wondering, um, did you really use their words? Did you copy their words literally? Or did you use a lot of your own tone of voice and uh, take a bit of freedom with what they said? I, you know, I mean, I, for each section, I wanted them to each speak for themselves. So I wanted Maggie's section to be youthful, the way that she was with the, her teacher, the text messages. So we texted a lot. I was nursing my child, and it was incredibly boring. Um, <laughs> like, you know, some moms, like, look at their baby, and they coo. And I just wasn't a cooer. And I, like, you know, sat there and did what I needed to do physically. But inside, I was like, this is so boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you were so texting. I was texting yeah. with Maggie. And I felt guilty the whole time. But I'm like, I'm working. I'm actually working. And this is for my baby. And um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yes. Um, so with Maggie, I wanted it to be youthful. With Lena, I wanted it to be her sort of the country aspect of her mixed with the sort of Indiana University student who had studied Freud and had all this sort of unlived life in her. And for Sloane, who was more patrician and spoke with a certain elegance, I wanted to keep her voice in there. But I also wanted to have a sort of authorial homogeneity yeah. to all of yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, my voice is in there too, but I'm translating them um, you know, when it came to Maggie, we would unpack a text message for, like, hours. Like, I was like, an, you know, at what point, 
how long did you wait until the next one came in? And we would talk about the next text message. Wow. You must have had like hundreds of thousands of words. Very many hundreds of thousands of yes. words. Yes. <laughs> like how many? Probably like 800,000. And you all brought this down to like, like what? 120. I wow. Think. Yeah. Which is what the original contract said on the book. <laughs> It said 120,000 words. Okay. <laughs> Untitled work on sex, 120,000 words. So I was like, you know, 800,000 words. Yeah. And I was like, here. Yeah. I didn't mean I didn't hand them all in, but I handed in a good 300. Wow, that must have been quite hard. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> now, uh, uh, one thing that is often written about the book is uh, it is presented like the book uh, what I read in the beginning, the best book that has been written about female desire in the past decades. But then you have these three women who have kind of a similar relationship, well, it's not the same, but towards the men, the adoring I talked about. Uh, uh, so it does really give an image of female sexuality in general. They're kind of the same, a little bit the same-ish types. Yes, I mean, I don't... Big sigh. <laughs> you hear this a lot. I, I don't think that, you know, I never set out to... I mean, maybe in the beginning I set out of, to sort of write a sort of sweeping story about sexual desire across the country, but when it came down to these three women, when it came down to the last 15 people, I realized that I had 15 people who, or three people who were telling their own stories. And what I really wanted to do was just get very, very, very insular into specific stories to show that, you know, three ordinary people were as important as anybody else. Yeah. You know, when you think about, like, celebrities, how many words are written about celebrities. And for me, I've always been like, well, why does a celebrity need that many words? They're not, they're just as, in, just by dint of being on a camera, all of a sudden they're, interesting when it's not really true of, I've interviewed a lot of celebrities who I'm just like, I gotta make this sound interesting, yeah. otherwise I'm not yeah, gonna have I a job. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now uh, another thing that is mentioned in reviews is that obviously the male voice is absent in the book. Yes. Are you toying with the idea of writing three men? No. No, no. That's <laughs> clear. And why not? I mean, you know, I just, I think I'm not that, I think that a man maybe could write about three men or another woman could. I am done with sex. You're done with I'm sex? I'm done with sex. Okay, um, yeah. So maybe to my husband's chagrin, I'm done with sex. <laughs> no, I'm... Um, and what aspect of it then? I'm just, uh, no, I'm not, I mean, I'm just joking, kind of. I mean, well. <laughs> I, mean I'm, I listen to so many yeah. people talk about sex. That, I mean, there's still interesting stuff going on, and there's new stuff, but I kind of just want to move on to a different topic. Yes, and you're going to publish a novel next year, I hear? Yes. 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 Okay, and it's not about sex, no sex. No, well, there's a little bit of, there's a lot of sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of sex. Okay, okay. I didn't mean completely. <laughs>